right, so, and 11 is even faster than 10. Yeah. I, I have a post-it over here why that. Why is 7 scared of 8? Yeah. 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 Or whatever. Wait, why is 7 scared of 7? So, let's talk tomorrow before we talk today. Let's talk tomorrow before we talk. You know, you gotta like get one of your plastic sinking and stuff. Okay. Well, that's all good because when one of you guys might pinch yourself or something. Yeah. Tomorrow, I will be at the Waldorf School in Cincinnati doing an instruction around, which is us teachers trying to get better and implement new ideas at Phoenix to keep us kind of on the cutting edge. So the lesson that you're um, like slated to be working on is 922, which is solving systems. Wait, which, no, if, we, that, what? if we think back to Math 1 or earlier Math 2, when we have a system that we're supposed to solve, like f of x and g of x, how do we solve a system? Intersection. So how do we find the intersection? Well, uh, if you do you can graph them. Well, we could graph them. Or, could, ooh, we could substitute. Like how everyone's them. talking and there's no hands. No you one's even make, attempting. Oh. Satya. You could make them equal to each other. Yeah. You set the equations equal to each other. So there's multiple ways. We can graph. We can algebraically set them equal to each other. We can algebraically substitute, if that makes sense. Um, so what we start to get into, and obviously you guys have done solving systems before, is when we have a parabola and a line. What's that going to do? Well, might solve twice, might solve once, if it just touches, like it has a tangent point, or it might solve no times. They might not intersect. So, yeah, they could solve, they could hit once. Nidden, by the way, congratulations on science fair, bro. Wait, what? Nidden won 150 bucks and got told he was the best. Oh, nice! That's a, that's, a, that's a double victory right there. What do you need, Nin? What are you um, thinking? Do you already know what this is? <laughs> um, you know, that's a so good I will answer though. that with this. Um, I want you tomorrow to be independently. Now, you're going to be in the library like with Miss Rosie, but I don't think you need a teacher with you. Really, so unless you bug her, you'll, like, she'll leave you alone probably. So you to independently get yourself to a point of confidence with finding solutions to systems. Now, the only danger with can you just jump straight to the practice is it's review preview, so it's not all practice on solving systems. So, like, this is a question about solving systems. So is this, but then a couple of these aren't, right? Like, a few of them. So, I would say only a couple practice problems might not be quite enough to regain all that comfort, and especially with working quadratic. So definitely do 66 and 67 as like an emphatic part of your homework, like that's important to the lesson. But I would ask that you probably try to process through a couple of these up here, just to double check that you're good. Um, if you really want, I could give somebody access to the answer key. If you know what we could do, I could just show it right now. Wait, um, one of you guys could then pull up YouTube tomorrow. Let me get my... Are we doing 921 or 9... We're doing 921 today, but we're talking about okay. tomorrow still. So if you guys go to do 922 tomorrow, and you want the lesson answers... Ooh. So just go back to the video and go to about 3 minutes and 45 seconds, right? So here's the lesson answers to 922, so when you guys are working on it tomorrow. So there are situations where there's no solution, right? If the graph doesn't intersect... And by tomorrow, you'll probably forget all these things, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes it's kind of funky. So improper fractions are better than bad decimals, like division by 3, division by 9, gross decimal forms. Leave it improper. Completely leave it improper. All right, so today's <laughs> lesson is Wait, more no, difficult. In <laughs> it's in the... It doesn't matter. It's in the video. I'm writing down the time period. So yeah, it's three minutes and forty-five seconds. Yeah, that's what I do. I like this way. I hope you don't remember what we're gonna put on a YouTube video. No, but so that when you're solving it, you actually oh. solve it, and then go check your answer. Dude, the answers to your homeworks are up on school. Dude. Oh, oh, they are. I was gonna make it absurd. Yeah, I might even make chapter nine live, but yeah, they're they're up. I have everything posted, but it might be invisible to you. It's like playing Fallout Four with glitches versus playing Fallout. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Oh, to me. All right. So we have a new parabolic situation that we need your expertise to help solve. 
Now, product work, this is not that easy of a problem. So I want you to set your brain up a little different than normal where you guys are like, oh, this is easy, we got this. This is gonna take some thinking. So there is a roller coaster called Gold Diggers Gulch. Now, to the best of my knowledge, this may not be real um, because I don't know many roller coasters that parabolically go through the ground. Um, but who knows, it might. And actually over in Europe, they actually have um, a bunch of crazy roller coasters. Or really anywhere over in North America. Well, if you've ever been to Cedar Point and seen the Wicked Twister, there's no like loop of that. It has one side and the other side and you go back and forth. So who knows exactly what's happening here. Maybe you just get on it and you ride the parabola back and forth. But either way, we have some data. The roller coaster starts 300 feet above the ground. That's a football field. It goes 100, sorry, it um, goes 50 feet before it enters the ground, it goes through that, um, crap, what am I trying to think of, like sea level, right? We're going to call that our zero. And goes 100 feet wide as it goes through the ground and then reemerges to climb back up another 300 feet on the other side because it is a parabola. And it is perfectly. If there's no friction. There is none. So, I guess they've made a frictionless roller coaster. Not even air. It's all in a vacuum. It's all, it's all magnets. magnets that, that's vacuum. the easiest way to have black. Well, I don't know about easiest. Wait, so, here's your task. Magnet. It's all yeah. Here's your task. Set up some axes so that we can start to determine some points on this roller coaster and write out an equation to model this. And then D is going to be your hardest part. Because B and C, you can kind of get from observation. D, we have to solve our inequality. So I'm kind of jumping through things because you guys can read. So all the data that we have is presented to us right here. And then we're working A through D. I want you guys to work together as a team. And you can work with little teams and then big team this. Um, but I would at least all together decide how we're going to set our axes. Um, I know I have my opinion that I think would make life easy, but you guys decide oh, where should we plant our axes. I was hoping you wouldn't do that. Probably just put the right on the axis. Let X be the horizontal distance. And then Y is right down the middle of it. Let X be the horizontal distance from the start. Let Y be the height of the car in the relationship to the ground. I'm very smart. You if you didn't the read and just started discussing, <laughs> so, I was hoping you would get there on your own. Yeah, I X did. Is, I'm X very is the ground. X, the x axis is the ground. Yeah, you have the y axis. Just go right down the middle. Okay. X, now wait. Y axis down the middle. They just said make the y axis, or uh, oh, make yeah, x your oh. distance from start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So according to what Satya read, I think y was going to go over here, but my smart board is horrible. It was there, or really technically there, yeah. right on the edge of the 50. Yeah. But yeah. then this point is 50, and this point is what? All right, you guys are good. Dive in. You could build a table. You could, I don't know, you could do a lot of things, really. I'm going to stop listing things you could do. Uh, I mean, you can, but you don't know what the function is right now. You could use Desmos, but I don't know how you would necessarily use Desmos. Guess and check with it. Perfect. It's the only way you can math correctly. the building?
you guys can answer this one. Hundred. Sure. You have to be a hundred. Why? If I can find a vertex, then I can make a drop out of it and then take them out of it. So we don't know how deep it goes, right? Is that what I just heard you say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you can find how deep it goes, it would be a good place to make it. Something plus three hundred. Something that would be like minus like the one. Could we start with a factor form and then figure yeah. out other yeah. stuff from there? I don't know. I'm just going to try to write it like standard quadratic. By the way, you guys can come up to the board too if you want. I can switch this around and you can have space to write if you want. Can you pull up like a graph thing? Like, like Jesmo? Can yeah. I pull up what? A uh, graph machine. Or just like here. I want that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me reorient this really quick. Um, oh, I should make sure that the math class is last. That'd be really fun if they did and let me make it. I'm going to steal Mrs. Goring's smart word pens because she never uses them. What do you mean last? Uh, I had two classes operating at the same time this morning. Yeah. I think I lied. Well, Mrs. Goring is really sick. You think oh, she has mono? Oh, God. So you were teaching them in mono. That's really bad. I was teaching a block of math, and Mr. Smith was helping me out. I think I got it. Block I think I've got the equation. Perfect. Oh, the, the fact that it can work. Yeah, I'm saying seven for this half an hour. All right, write what you want, draw what you want. Okay. My advice would be make axes first with the line tools. I would make axes with the line tools. This would make an equation that would. Like that? Yeah, that and then once you do that, once yeah. you stop, you can move it left, right, exactly. once you click the cursor again. Which would yeah. So then click cursor. And then move that. Yeah, you're getting smart board. Okay, so Thomas, what's the vertex? Uh, I can do that in just a second. I just gotta. So plug 100 in. Yeah, I can Well, I can do that. Where's he? Where's he? That? Okay, I'm not as good as the tip. Dude, uh, that doesn't work. 100, 100, negative 100. I'm serious, look at how perfect these pens are. 300, 100, negative 100. 50, 100, negative 100. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, this isn't going to be, do you guys want this to be like completely accurate? Yeah, accurate? What is an accurate? Um, <laughs> scale. You said so it Sophia, wrong. Sophia, Sophia, just do every box Stop. like 50 or something. Give me that pen. I'll do every <laughs> box. What, every box is 50. Would be every box tell me. That I shouldn't trade Mrs. Goldring pen. All of mine are matched in. Hers are perfect because she doesn't use her smart board. Okay, every box is going to be 50. Yeah. Mine goes all the way over. 50. Yeah. 50. So it's 100, negative 100? Yeah, I know, but I didn't think it would work in this situation. Like, I knew it would work, but I didn't think it would do that. Dang, gravity. You have squeezed it. It might be done. Oh, well, no, it should turn green. How do you make it thinner? It is done. You, it was already thin. Um, I don't. Hey, stop it. Stop it. Let me drive for a second. This. Okay. Thickness right here. So if you want fancy oh, style, make it calligraphy, and then you have thick thin. So normally I click the thin on calligraphy. Okay. I'm just trying to write down. The equation is 125th x squared. 125th? x squared, yeah. And then minus 8x. Does 125th make it steeper? <coughs> or like uh, wider or narrower? Wider. It would make it wider. Wider, right? Yeah, because it's less than 1. Minus 8x plus 1. Vertex of 100, 100, which means we can get the equation really easy. Is that readable? 100, 100? 
from. We also negative. Right. What am I doing? We also have to know that the um. Wait, vertex is one times negative, negative hundred, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Why is the eraser like this? Why is the eraser? It's a smart board code that you erase it. I want to like. You can make it smaller if you want. How? How the crop, the thickness of the producer. Uh, I already got it. Uh, just put it in graphical form. It'll be. Is my back is free? Yeah. He did? Yeah. What did you tell him to? What? Yeah, I mean, I heard him saying it, but I couldn't believe it. I'll just write it down there. Yeah, like how you got where you are? That would be great. Oh, okay. Well, I I did it by... Because he's a genius. I'm not shaking the table. This would give the... the Oh, yeah, why are you doing that? But it has... It's a really weird number. Huh. And then... So I just forced it and divided it by 25, and it was. Where's mine? Mm. Now we got there by starting in factor form, right? So your factor form, just make sure we're not just like breezing past stuff too yeah, fast, good. was x what? Uh, Minus 50. That's my smart board glitch right there. Times x minus 150. So then, how did you determine the 125th? I divided it by one. I divided it by 25 because that would make it have 300 as the y. Ah, oh, to make my y-intercept what we wanted. Now, does that then work to spit out the right? It works. It does. Yeah. Is that how you got your negative 100 then? Yeah. Ah, so we went from factor form to like trinomial form, probably right, like the the x squared and and your constant was way too big. So we divide to bring our constant back to where it should be. And then we can always check this, right, to see do these points happen correctly in the new parabola. All right, so <clears throat> then what are we trying to say again? When is the roller coaster car above ground? So for what domains are we positive height and what domains are we negative height? As we talked about yesterday, domain being the x values, Chris? Uh, less than 50 and more than 150. Less than 50, more than 150, or yeah, our below ground domain is from 50 to 150, right? Perfect. Um, so then, wait, if we're trying to talk about this as an inequality, you're saying 1 half x squared, sorry, 1 half x squared, was that plus or minus 8x? Uh, it's 125. Sorry, one, yeah. Minus 8x minus plus 8x. Plus 8x. I already got it, Chris. Now you're saying it is greater than 0? Can we solve situations like this? Well, like it's like it's like it's like uh, uh, they'll well. make it everything but 50 to 50. Well, we can square root everything to the maximum. So we can work our way backwards. Making it right? pretty much now. But yeah. How, so really the question I'm trying to get at here is how do we deal with a quadratic inequality? Uh, wait. So in like regular inequality equations, do you uh, solve them by like taking an equation? So wait. Like quadratic is to get equations. To get hey Thomas, do you hear Nidhi talking? Because I, I want to try to help all of, like 7th and 8th grade, trying to help correct some social behaviors. Nidden was giving a like a, a thought to the group, and you just totally interjected. I was. But that's rude. Like you have to be aware of that. You can't do that. Like in social, like you can't be in a meeting with people, and somebody be presenting and be like, "Wait, no!" Oh, like keep that in your head. 
I like that you're processing, but really you should be listening to Nid. Pause your thinking. Listen. Sorry, what again now? Okay. So temporarily, we say it's equal, and then once we do that, we bring it back to this. All right. What would be the one caution that we would have to watch out for? If we multiply or divide by a negative, right? So yeah. okay. as we're doing work on both sides, yeah, be careful. If we multiply or divide by a negative, that would goof us up. But aside from that, yeah, we temporarily want to allow things to act like an equation and then use our values we get to sensibly. Why do we say it like anything? Because in means not. Yeah. It's not equal. Yeah. So, so in, Satya, that's actually a valid question. A inequality or an equality creates an equation or an inequation, quote unquote. We just, inequation sounds gross, so we just leave it inequality. But the, what you have written out is an inequation. It's not an equation. It you know, sounds it's, funny. An equation. Sounds like any, like A-N-Y. Yeah, that equation. also might be like. All right, so more applications. And this is legitimate, like if you go into finance, you will be faced with problems like this to solve for people. If the operational costs of Minor Minor 49er Amusement Park is $300,000 daily, that would be your water, your gas, your electric, your people, your like everything your, that's called your overhead, right? So operational costs, also known as your overhead, it's what you got to make back to make nothing. Right? That's your break even. You'd have to sell 300000 So, <clears throat> our revenue, money that we bring in, right, is represented by this function, 100x times 0.05x plus 5 quantity. Sorry, I forgot to say that. For a given day when x people visit the park. So, if just one person visits the park, 100 times 5.05 that's an expensive park. But obviously that wouldn't really probably be for sensibly with a person coming. You probably have to reach a certain point for it to make sense. So work together to write a function that would model the net profit, careful, profit of the amusement park per day and then determine how many people need to be at the park for the park to actually make money. So essentially we'll want to find our break even point, which will be a zero here, if we're graphing profit. Now if you graph revenue separate from that, like, so realize, how do we find profit? I might as well go ahead and ask that question. How do you determine profit? How much, how much work and how much do you lose? Yeah, revenue minus cost, right? Exactly what you said, how much you earn minus how much you lose but revenue minus costs. So, we have revenue, we have costs, we have everything we need. We could build a new function that just represents profit. And that would be my advice to you. Have you had sliders? You have to have put a variable in first and it should pop up. Add slider yeah, for. Yeah, put it in. Simplified. It's not you can't do a slider for x because x is in your graph here. Because x is your axis. You gotta use like a or b or c or h or k or mm. some other one. So, Mr. Hudson, if we simplify this, 5x squared plus 5x Why are you asking me? Because I don't know if I get it right. Ask your classmates. They're smarter than me on it. honestly. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
um, minus 100, plus 30, 312. So you get the minus 100. Okay, that's the off rate. 300. Yeah, 312. Okay, but we're up here. And 100, why 100? Try to spread minus 100. It's a straight plus. 500, 5x squared plus 100, right? Plus 500x plus 100. Plus 500x. Look, commas don't work, it doesn't make circles. It's greater than. Okay, they need to have 200 customers. Yeah. Yeah. Equal to break even. To break even. We need 200 customers. Oh, here, Tom, can you come over here and make sure it makes sense for what you're doing? Wait, oh, never mind. So 5x squared plus 5x squared is greater than 300. They need 200 customers. Yeah. Chris. Yeah. They need. They only need two hundred customers. Yep. So. Okay. Yeah. I you just right click later down. down. You can see zero, and then you check where it hits the. Um, oh wait. Are you just getting out of that note? Yeah. You can do that on a graph bar. Yeah. Desmos yeah. 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 more like make graph. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you went to answer the yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what number of visitors will come? Okay, so anything on anything under one hundred. So if this is the one with the number of visitors. So do we have our equation for profit worked out? Oh uh, yeah, five yeah. x squared plus five hundred x minus three hundred thousand. Or x or squared plus one hundred x minus. Yeah, that. And they both like graph out the same. It's just they're dividing it by five. So wait, so if we utilize our amazing tools of Desmos, which is one of my most popular sites visited. Wait, sixty thousand, right? Okay. I think we're gonna have to have a big. So you said our profit. So we'll say p of x. Wait, why isn't this giving me a you said is what? It's the easiest way to type it. Uh, x squared plus 100x. Oh my god, that frowns a lot. Uh, minus 60,000. All the time it's wrong. What's up? What's with the vertex of the parabola? It's negative. Is this the, wait, didn't somebody say something about 5x? Yeah, did you? How is this the you same? Have to, you have to by five. Um, multiply all of it. Ah, so for it to be the same, I need to do that. Wait, what? Oh. Right? Yeah. Where's that thing? Wait, why? It looks like it shouldn't change. It's not too parallel. It's because the y intercept is negative 60,000. The vertex is. Oh, it's negative. Ah, that's where we get small. Wait, it's I'm way more than sixty thousand. It's not a three hundred thousand because you've got the five there. Three hundred. Oh, I um simplified it. But does but that what? changes it? How did you get to ninety? Because he changed. Okay, I got sixty thousand since we I divided everything by five. He got three hundred thousand because he did. Let's take the origin. Wait, but how did you get two hundred and ten and seven? Because the x changed it some. Ah. Uh, how? Uh -huh. Remember if it x equals zero, then two is Wait, can you zoom on the x? Can you zoom on the x intercept? Wait, what? Oh, you're at 50. That's cute. Like, you weren't at 50. Yeah, just look at it. What about 5 and 10? So, wait. I red and blue it. are on the same x intercepts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because factoring it doesn't change your zeros, yeah. right? Factoring out the 5. Does change your vertex point. So what is this telling us? Well, no, because the vertex point is at 200. Once the part reaches 200, they break. Vertex, right. 
So wait, Jacob, what are you? Hold on a second. Five x and then five x squared plus five hundred x. Perch is playing fifteen hundred dollars to give you. This is your five x squared plus five hundred x minus three hundred. Okay, so this is just like that. Yeah. So this is what these are. The reason I put both these up here is because you guys are telling me two different equations. Both of them will work for this situation, but be careful, they model two different things. When the 5 is factored out, your vertex has changed. That changes parts of your function, but it doesn't change your zeros. And since what we care about here are the zeros, we're fine with that. But the real function is red, same zeros, but that's what we want to be looking at. Still a zero of 200 and negative 300. Negative 300 people come in, they make, they break even. Or, if real people arrive at the park, not negative people. Uh, yeah. Now 200 people will cause us to what? Break even. Break even. So, you need more than so to make profit, X is going to have to be greater so you than... Honestly, with the cost of this park, like, it better be good. <laughs> Maybe they yeah, you mine get... there. Maybe they put gold in the ground and that's a terrible idea. If you have, it's like, they can't yeah. buy that much. Gold. Maybe the maybe that's why the operation costs are so high. Maybe, yeah. but like at the same time, they don't let maybe that's why it's five hundred five dollars per that's, person. I'm thinking, just, no, it's not five hundred five. It's fifteen hundred dollars. Can we do one more? Go in and see what the cost of a jersey wall is. Okay. It's not that, that much. I went there. It's not that much. Yeah, it's really like. Dude, amusement parks are normally between 50 and 100 bucks. Depends on what type of pass you buy, but 50 bucks normally is the minimum. All right, oh, San Fran. If you've never been to California, get out there at some point before it breaks off the U.S. and floats away. But San Fran is known for its fog. Thick, dense layers of fog. No joke, this is all real. And this equation actually makes sense for a real person kicking a football. Um, you'll see negative 16 a lot. That deals with your gravity. So the height h of a ball in feet, I hate the English in feet, can be represented by that equation when t is seconds. So go ahead and if you want, jot down h of t is negative 16 t squared plus 64 t. What is the 64 really telling us? The y or stuff. No. Oh wait, that's a t on Because it's, yeah, that's a coefficient. Why is it supposed to be zero? Yeah, why aren't such to be zero zero? Because she kicks it at zero time, and it is what if she's zero height. In the air when she kicks it? We're assuming the ball's at ground when kicked, although we know it's inches off. It would be negligible difference. But it's not ne negligible. Depends what we're trying to calculate. We could actually argue whether or not it's negligible. We could solve it both ways and determine how different does it make my answer. Is it off by significant digits or not? All right, so here's our question. At what point is the ball 40 feet high? And when, then, I'm going to extend on it, um, reach its maximum height, and back to the ground. I got all those answers of Pepsi. Graphing utilities. I mean, that's the world we live in, so if you get comfortable with it, as long as the job you end up getting would allow you to use a utility like that, now do it. Vertex is 264, so it goes up. 64 feet high is maximum. Um, at 40, it's 64. Yeah. And at 40, that's my second answer. It's on the left. There, I think there is a left. There. Wow. Is there no line? We got 39.99. I could have just typed it. Oh, it's probably been a lot easier. Is your thing uh, right equals 40. What did you just say, Jacob? Jacob Did you make everything X's? So because the input in Desmos is stuck being X, you gotta change your equation to use X's.
Oh. You don't ever watch a really good kicker? Like, I mean, you watch football games, something like that. But the ball comes off the foot pretty darn fast. There's not a lot of elapsed time between the ball leaving the kicker's foot and getting back to the ground, right? Even some of the best kickers, by the way, are soccer players. Some of the best football field goal kickers came from soccer. So, by the way, to throw love out for soccer. So, according to Desmos here that Satya told me to go look at, we have a max point after two seconds. I never told you to go look at it. Stop training. Well, you said you got them all in Desmos, so... That was essentially telling me, if I wanted to know how you got it, go to Desmos. So, at 40 feet, well, that's not even a second. Wait, sorry, every time I click, I move the graph. Three, and not even a half seconds. And the ball gets back down to the ground after four seconds. That seems real. Yeah, that would, I mean, you watch a field goal kicker, and you go, if you're from, like, the 40 or 50 yard line, and you're, you know, trying to get it up through the, uh, the goal posts, it's, it's going to have a little bit of hang time. Now, the issue with this is most, like, NFL fields now would have something at, like, uh, not necessarily there, maybe, maybe, like, something like that. Anyone watch football? Does the ball actually get back to the ground on a parabola? No, there's a net, right? So there's going to be a net somewhere back here that that would be determined by distance, but all we can do right now is time. Back. Yeah, and then it will hit the net at some point. So this would actually be an application of systems of equations. If you had to determine how long until the ball hits the net, your parabola doesn't come back to the x-axis. It stops at a certain um, x value. And then you know what's going All right, um, try to solve this without a graphing utility or something like that. You could just set, oh, that's what Solve it without a graphing utility. I mean, sure, if you want to share your idea with the class, that's fine, but. only have about a minute left. Are they downstairs? Yes, they are downstairs. Oh, they uh, Mrs. Cullinan does summer work. I shouldn't even have a laptop for the rest of the class, right? Yeah, I don't ever think you need your laptop. Oh, for like one minute. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Nidden told us we should temporarily make this an e equation, right? I think that was a yes. So then, what would we need to first do? Well, I guess get the four on the other side. Ah, get the four on the other side. Sorry, equals four. 
after I do that, you want to have that. So x squared plus 2x minus 3 equal to 0. Try making it such an right. Try making what? This? Yeah. Ooh, the top one could be a perfect square. Wait, it already is. It's exposed. X plus one squared equals four. So I don't need this. Yeah, I didn't realize that. So X plus one equals the positive or negative two. So X then, when I subtract one, is either And if we were looking for a real life situation, the positive would probably be the only thing that made sense. Yeah. A lot of times when we solve this out, we only get one answer that matters. All right, and with that, that's all we got for today. So guys, tomorrow, remember you'll be in the library, just working through that stuff on your own. Whatever you need to do to get to a point of being comfortable. Wouldn't it be funny? Never be comfortable like being in nuclear war anymore. It's kind of square. It's like the opposite like of that. most American pricing brackets of like when you buy in bulk you save money. Yeah, it's like the more you buy at once. There are some situations like that where if you don't do the math, you end up like getting tricked. Like where you buy the bigger pack of toilet paper and it's actually not a better deal. That happens a lot when like